Thank you, Acting Speaker, and lovely to see you in the chair. Um, and I rise to speak on the State Taxation Acts and other Acts uh, Amendment Bill 2023. Uh, and much like many of our twice yearly tax bills, this bill makes many minor amendments to rectify any drafting errors or loopholes, uh, but I'd like to focus on a few big ways that this bill supports Victorians in the, in the current housing market and by making more homes available to renters and encouraging the development uh, of vacant land and changes to protect Victorians from dodgy property developers and the payroll tax initiatives which are the envy of the nation. But firstly, I want to raise the issue of the opposition's lead speaker. And I was a bit disappointed that, given that he spruced up before lunch, that uh, he was going to be here and be enthusiastic about his 30-minute speech on this bill and how important it was. He gave us 10 minutes, uh, but he must have had a long lunch because something happened. He didn't appear after lunch, which is a bit disappointing. So, um, so that's how important it is to their lead speaker on the opposition side. And uh, quite interesting, he couldn't find the other 20 minutes to be here. He, I don't know whether he was out the back scheming and doing numbers and doing other things out the back that they do, or whether the coffee was too good, but unfortunately, the member for Sandringham couldn't appear. Uh, but that's OK, because uh, the leader in the Nationals probably picked up part of his speech anyway, so it probably meant that the leader in the Nationals filled in his 10 minutes. Uh, but of course, one of our key initiatives was reducing the regional payroll tax to a 1.2125 per cent, which is just one quarter of the metropolitan rate, and it happens to be, and proudly so, the lowest in the entire nation. Uh, strategic interventions like this and our regional unemployment rate has plummeted to, obviously, historic lows, and remarkably, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, uh, there hasn't been a month where regional unemployment was higher under our administration than what it was during the previous government's tenure. Of course, uh, we've significantly raised the payroll tax-free threshold, not once, but four times since taking office, uh, since 2014. And these substantial changes uh, have already resulted in you know, substantial savings for Victorian businesses, totalling um, around about $2 billion uh, up until um, the fiscal year of 2022-2023. And of course, the measurements uh, or the measures represent our commitment to fostering economic growth, supporting businesses and ensuring that we, uh, that prosperity for all citizens. And we believe in creating uh, a thriving environment that uh, encourages innovation, investment and employment. Uh, right across uh, uh, our communities in all of Victoria. Uh, Acting Speaker, uh, this creates a new era for um, small businesses in our regions uh, because the latest budget and our government took another bold step to lighten the load for small enterprises. Starting from July 1, 2024, the payroll tax-free threshold will rise substantially, uh, climbing from 700,000 to 900,000. Uh, and the impact of this change is nothing short of transformative. And of course, this adjustment means that uh, 4,200 Victorian businesses will no longer have to pay this tax, which is fantastic for those small businesses, but also for those local areas where those businesses are operated. Additionally, uh, 22,000 businesses will experience a reduction uh, tax burden and a saving as much as around about $9,700 annually. And from the 1st of July 2025, the, th the threshold will ascend even higher, reaching a remarkable $1 million. So, of course, this move will grant another 1,500 businesses exemption status. In essence, approximately 6,000 businesses uh, constituting 15% of all current payroll tax paying businesses will be entirely tax free. Uh, and the suggestion from those opposite that we do not support business is a complete furphy. Uh, the commitment doesn't end there, though. Uh, understanding the diverse landscape of businesses is one of the reasons that we are phasing out the payroll tax-free threshold for larger enterprises, and it ensures our support uh, is precisely targeted as of this change, and the tax-free amount will gradually decrease for each dollar of business a business pays in wages over $3 million. Uh, so these changes go beyond mere relief, they are a fundamental shift by easing compliance costs uh, and levelling the playing field. 
Of course, um, these are not just flippant policies. It's a promise and it's a, another demonstration of our government making it, um, real differences for Victorians and Victorian businesses. Uh, and of course, we promise to bolster the backbone of our, econ our economy. Uh, our vital, vibrant, diverse small businesses will continue to do that and drive that change. Uh, we know that housing availability is the key uh, to housing affordability. Uh, and in response to the housing crisis, we've introduced the vacant residential land tax, providing a financial incentive for uh, owners of unoccupied residential properties in Melbourne's inner and middle suburbs to rent out these homes. And the changes in this bill will expand the VRLT provisions to encourage owners of un unoccupied homes in Melbourne's outer suburbs and regional Victoria to make these homes available to rent or to buy. And that's great if more homes become available for people that are finding it difficult to access a roof over their head. And of course, uh, our runs are on the board. Victoria's unemployment rate, you know, currently sits at an historically low rate, around three whole percentage points lower than what it was when we came to office. And that's, that's amazing. We've created over 500,000 jobs since uh, the depths of the pandemic. And I think I recall around the pandemic time uh, that those opposites were, uh, were yelling out and screaming out that the sky was going to fall in. No jobs, no one will come and invest in Victoria. We've, you know, we've uh, uh, you know, stopped Melbourne thriving as a city. Uh, no events. Uh, and yet I walk around Melbourne quite often when I'm staying here and it is thriving. There are plenty of jobs. In fact, we can't fill a lot of positions because there are more jobs than people to fill them. So uh, we, uh, you know, we're constantly, I constantly talk about dodgy developers and I've had a bit to deal with dodgy developers in regard to how they've treated some of my constituents. Um, but, you know, there are many honest developers uh, and uh, vendors out there and, uh, and I'm pleased to say there's um, many honest, more honest developers than dodgy ones. And what I mean by dodgy is ones that are, uh, take uh, the purchases for granted and uh, constantly put pressure on them and uh, I would say deal with, deal with them in a, in a totally inappropriate way and an unfair way and forcing purchasers or investors to take legal action when maybe they can't afford to do it, when developers can sit on their hands and just say, basically say, take me to court. Uh, our government's efforts to lower housing costs in Melbourne by releasing large expanses of land on the outskirts are being hindered by major developers um, who are strategically holding on to land and releasing it gradually to maximise their profits. And of course, they release it gradually and you know, they, they break it up into parcels of land uh, and again uh, trying to make huge profits out of it. I don't begrudge them in making a profit uh, but when it directly affects the availability of housing or potential housing for people that are in desperate need, uh, I don't think huge profits should be over people's welfare and, per and people outcomes and uh, I'm always one advocating for the better welfare of our communities. So, of course, in a land banking scheme, property developers tip typically acquire land and they divide it into smaller parcels and present them to investors. And, of course, our, as an investor, you can either purchase a specific block of land or acquire an option to buy one, uh, known as an option agreement. And it's an investment strategy in, real, in the real estate sector where investors purchase extensive parcels of undeveloped land, and that practice has to stop, uh, is my belief anyway. Um, of course, ATSIC um, took action against some of this land banking in the past uh, and a number of organisations uh, were prosecuted by ATSIC and I know there was one out my way, 21st century, uh, who land banked. Uh, they were out in the Mount Cottrell area which falls in the Melton electorate and I'm pleased to say ATSIC took action against them. Um, in the very short period that I have left, this is an important bill. Uh, in regard to the taxes that this state government applies, but it's about providing availability of housing
for our community, which is the number one issue that we have to deal with going forward. And I'm totally supportive of this bill and I commend it to the House.